Wickham Wanderers, recently promoted from League One, but currently dead last in the championship relegation battle. Wickham proved to be one of the most difficult rebuilds we could ever do for the pure fact that their budget is so low compared to the rest of the championship teams. But today we are running headfirst into the adversity as we take over Akin Fenwar's Wickham Wanderers and look to make them the best team, not only in England, but the entirety of Europe. Oh, I hope you guys are prepared for a little bit of chaos. <laughs> but lads, if you do go on to enjoy today's rebuild, make sure you leave a like on the video. Also, make sure you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below if you are new around here. We are on the grind towards 400,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. The objective of the rebuilds are to win the UEFA Champions League final. All games in the rebuild are simulated. We cannot use the new jump in feature in rebuilds. The Champions League final, however, must be played. And of course, do not get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. There's the rules and objectives. Now it's time to jump into the rebuild. So kicking off our first season here at Wickham, this is the starting lineup we are dealt with. You can tell on paper, I mean, no disrespect to anybody, but it is not a very good side, especially if we are looking to survive in the championship this season. An aging squad, not too many young players that are going to help us out in the long run, but we're going to have to do with what we've got at the moment and try somehow surviving relegation in season one. And I mean, I've, after playing around with the budget a little bit, getting the slider a little bit more to the right, you can see we've got about 2.3, 2.4 million pounds to work with. Oh God, that's, you get that much in a League 1, League 2 side, let alone a bloody championship team. This is going to be difficult. Trying to raise revenue any way possible, starting off here with a player departure as Matt Bloomfield is off to the Turkish League for £185,000. Yep, we're desperate. David Wheeler also out of the club, off to the Swedish League, I believe, for just under a million pounds. And we have found ourselves a new starting left back here. It is Jake Vokens making the move down from the Premier League to the Championship coming across from Southampton for 1.1 million pounds. And Josh Parker is out of here. 300,000 pounds for the striker. It's clear in season at Wickham, baby. Buy one, get one free. Darius Charles is off to the Philadelphia Union in the MLS. And we have made a marquee signing here. Well, marquee for our level. Richie Ledesma, the American wonder kid, currently out at the moment with, I believe, an ACL injury. So best of luck to him in his recovery. But the American attacking midfielder has signed from PSV for 2.4 million pounds. And the Welsh left back, Joe Jacobson, off to Sweden, off or Switzerland, I should say, off to BSC Young Boys here for 730,000 pounds. So there we go, lads. We've done well with the money we have now. Obviously, not too much money to work with, but we've brought in Vokens and Ledesma, a fair few players out of the club, fair few dead, Deadwood players out of the club. But yeah, it's going to be... A tough season one. A very tough season one. I've left us a little bit of money to hopefully play around with in January. But we've just got to take things and see how they come. And I mean, this is how the side is looking right now. It's nothing crazy. Vokens 63, Ledesma 66, not standout players, but they're long-term signings. No surprise, fellas, to see us in the middle of the relegation battle here. Currently two, or sorry, four points in safety, sitting 20th in the championship right now on 26 points. Barnsley, Rotherham, and Coventry all in the relegation spots, but we are by no means safe. So we're gonna have to go out here and get ourselves a new striker. Akin Fenwa already going down so significantly. So I've gone out and bought ourselves Adam Ida, the Irish striker has joined us from Norwich City for three million pounds on the dot. And that's all we've done for business, stretching our transfer budget to the absolute max. Adam Ida, again, another long-term signing here. Absolute beast in career mode, the Irishman is. So we've brought him in. Gonna need him to bang the goals in for us if we're gonna survive relegation. Let's go, lads. Oh my God. We have survived relegation by three points here in season one. Holy dooly, that would have come down to the final day. Barnsley, Rotherham, Coventry, all relegated. 
We have survived relegation by the skin of our teeth. At the other end of the spectrum, though, it is Bournemouth and Watford automatically promoted with Brentford, Cardiff, Norwich, and Reading fighting it out for the final promotion spot. Man City have won themselves the FA Cup. Spurs have broken their trophy down a drought and won the Carabao Cup over Leicester. Brentford have finally not choked a promotion season. They've gone up through the playoff final against Cardiff. Real Madrid have won the Champions League. And it is Porto taking down Ajax to win the Europa League. Also, lads, we've got to show our respects and salute Adebayo Akinfenwa, who's gone down eight overall in this first season and is officially retiring from football. The strongest player in the game, Akin Fenwa, is boost. Best of luck, mate. But there we go, lads. That is season one here at Wickham. We've survived relegation. Need to keep building, though, and working our way up the championship table. The grind continues. Jumping into season two, and honestly, lads, it is all about, it's all about surviving relegation again, but revenue raising too. That is why we've kicked things off by selling Jack Grimmer, the former Fulham defender, off to Bristol City for 1.2 million pounds. And we have decided to loan out Curtis Anderson here to the Polish league for the season. Daryl Horgan out of the club, the Irishman off to Argentina. 1.5 million pounds there. And it is our main goalkeeper, Ryan Alsop, out of the club. It's a big move as we have decided to sell him here to BSC Young Boys in the Swiss League for just under a million pounds. Need to go out and get ourselves a new starting keeper now. And that man has been identified. I've got to say, maybe one of the most Norwegian names you are ever going to see. But we have signed Christopher Klaassen here for 2.5 million pounds. Fingers crossed he can become an absolute beast for us. And Ryan Tafazzoli is headed to the MLS, signing with Atlanta United for £710,000. Gonna sign ourselves a free agent player. It is an Argentinian, Lorenzo Valente. If anybody can figure out whose regen it would be, leave a comment down below. But Lorenzo Valente has joined us here on a free deal. Just because we're in season two doesn't mean the clearance sales are stopping. Curtis Thompson off to San Lorenzo here for 1.2 mil. And we have signed ourselves a new starting center back, the only player in the entirety of FIFA 21 who has the same first name as me. And I don't mean just Jared, I mean the actual spelling, J-A-R-R-A-D. We come few and far between, but Jared Branthwaite has joined us here from Everton for 2.8 million pounds. And it is another signing here, Mohamed Tarbouni. A lot of people have been leaving comments recently saying that they want me to sign this guy in a rebuild. So I'm a man of the people. We've signed Mohamed Tarbouni from AZ Alkmaar for 3.1 million pounds. And we have stumbled upon an absolute beast in the free agents list. Kays Ruiz Atil hasn't had his contract redeemed at his club. It hasn't been renewed. So we've picked the Moroccan midfielder up on a free transfer here. That is an absolute bargain and a half. I'm very excited by this. But there we go, lads. Not messing around to kick off this transfer window and to kick off this second season. We don't want to be in the relegation battle again. So they've gone out, made some big moves, and hopefully we have some big growth within the big growth, I should say, within the squad. I mean, this is what the starting eleven looks like. Some good growth around the board, but nothing insane from last season. Just got to hope that the growth comes on the park and it comes this season because, yeah, again, I really don't know what my expectations need to be for this second season. Also had this Canadian kid in our free agents youth squad list, Alex Miller, 55 rated, 17 years of age. Don't know what to expect with him, but I'm going to promote him and look to loan him now. Yeah, remember what I said about not being in a relegation battle again? Throw that one out the window. We currently find ourselves one point in safety. One point ahead of Hull City. The good thing, though, is that Sunderland and Fleetwood Town have just been absolutely abysmal and have find themselves right down the bottom of the table on 12 points and are nowhere near us, but we're going to have to work if we want to survive. Going to look to revenue raise a little bit more here. Another player sold to Atlanta United. It is Uche Ikpizu, the striker, joining them for £1.15 million. Pounds. And we have decided to loan out Ruiz Atil to Aston Villa for the remaining six months of the season. Now, this is a very, very, very frustrating moment. Cashcut has been a pain in the ass. He has been the bane of my existence recently. I've been trying to offer Scott Cashcut a new offer. His contract was running out at the end of the season. I tried offering him more money. He didn't want to re-sign. So unfortunately, 
We're going to have to let Scott Cashcut leave on a free transfer to Rio Ave next season. I mean, short term, it's a loss. But long term, Scott Cashke, you've fucked yourself out of a Champions League. Trying to bring some players in, though, that actually want to get success here and want to go all the way. Amel Belakotchap, the defender from Germany, joining us here from VFL Bochum for £2.4 million. So there we go, lads. Belakotchap into the club. Big window there. I mean, I hope... I'm praying, I'm crossing my fingers and my toes that this is enough to save us and keep us up in, in the championship once again. Time will tell though. Let's get to the end of season number two and see what fate holds. Get in there, lads. The relegation zone has not changed compared from halfway through the season. We've moved up one spot and have finished 20th, surviving relegation once again. Hull City, Sunderland, and Fleetwood Town all relegated. Swansea coming close as well, but we have survived. At the other end of the table, however, Aston Villa and Burnley right back up to the Premier League with Norwich, Nottingham Forest, Bristol City, and West Brom fighting it out for the final spot. Liverpool have won the FA Cup. Spurs, what is in the water in North London? Spurs have won two trophies, two Carabao Cups in two years. And West Brom polish off the trifecta of clubs returning to the Premier League after one season down as they win the playoff final. Bayern Munich once again winning another Champions League title, this time taken down Atletico Madrid. And it is Barcelona emerging as Europa League winners. But there we go, lads. Another season, another relegation battle. Needs to be much better in season three and start getting in the mindset of pushing for promotion. Let's hope for a huge third season here in charge of the Wanderers. Season three begins with a player departure here. Alex Samuel is off to the French leagues here and we get 860,000 pounds in the bank in return. Have decided to sell this striker here, Georgiou, only on a loan though. Georgiou off to Atletico for the season. And Anthony Stewart has been sold to the English defender. Became our third choice defender after we brought in Jared Branthwaite and Bella Kodchap. So we've sent him here to Tondela for 1.35 mil. This kid looks Okay, Walid Brazier, a French striker, 17 years of age, gonna sign him on a free, hopefully loan him out and see what can happen. Same deal with this guy here, looks a little bit better, but Diego Bore, a Colombian striker, 66 rated, 19 years of age, sign him and see what happens. Ah, uh, this name, I, I mean, I'm, a, I'm 23 years old, almost bloody 24, and I still feel like I'm a bloody 10 year old giggling at this name, but we've signed him, lads. The future of the club. It is Alan Virginius. Virgin Virginius. Lol. Ha ha. 4.1 million pounds to bring the Frenchman in. And we're going to hopefully have Virginius take our Champions League virginity. Another free agent player into the club, however, it is Raymond Jame Pejelo. I've definitely butchered that name, but the Spaniard joins us. And the Swedish defender, Marcus Janssen, joining us on a free deal as well. Just really trying to bolster out squad numbers. Dominic Gape is going to have to leave a gaping hole in the Independiente midfield as he signs for 1.35 mil. And once again, we're selling or sending Curtis Anderson on loan here for the season. Also decided to loan out the Argentine Argentinian youngster Lorenzo Valente to Reading and Alex Miller loaned out as well to Central Cordova. So there we go lads, the transfer window mostly focused on getting squad numbers in, definitely sold a lot of our older players over the years, need to get some of the younger guys in to either develop them or just have them purely for number reasons, but I'm excited to see what the future holds. The starting 11 keeps growing and hopefully Virginius can be a beast for us. The thing that I like about this squad so far is the majority of the squad are growing together. We got them around the same overall and now they're all around that 70, 71, 72 mark. So hopefully they can grow together all the way towards the Champions League final. <sighs> Fucking hell, lads. Remember when I said... Remember when I said that we need to start pushing for promotion this season? We currently find ourselves in the worst position in the entirety of the rebuild. We're in the relegation zone again. Norwich are somehow in the relegation zone with us. This is ridiculous. All right, lads, making some moves here. Steven Sessegnon coming here from Bayern Munich. The Englishman signing for 5.8 million pounds. A big addition to the back line. And there we go, lads. That's all we're doing. I am determined to stay up this season. Why is this shit so stressful? I don't know what Norwich have done in the second half of the season. They're nowhere near it. But we have survived relegation by one point. I can't do this for the remainder of the rebuild. We're three seasons in 
and still in relegation battles. My hair will be going gray before we get out of the bloody championship. My word. Brighton and Bournemouth automatically promoted, however, with Blackburn, Brentford, Nottingham and Stoke fighting it out for that final spot. Man United have got their hands on the FA Cup this year. Newcastle United. That's a nice little change there. Newcastle United winning the Carabao Cup. And it is Nottingham Forest who find themselves out of the championship and into the Premier League. Inter Milan have got their hands on the Champions League. Whilst Arsenal have taken down Atletico Madrid and won the Europa League. Fair play. But that is season three done and dusted, lads. I know in the intro of the video, I said this was going to be a difficult rebuild, but I did not expect it to be as difficult as it's proving to be. We move on though, and hopefully force ourselves, I don't know, up to 20th next season. We'll find out. Kind of sad about this one, lads. I signed Mohamed Tulbani as someone that could have been a player for us in the long term. Someone I had a vision of seeing lifting the Champions League trophy with us. But unfortunately, the Dutch midfielder didn't feel the same way. He didn't want to be here, so we decided to sell him to Swansea City for 6.2 million pounds. And we have found his replacement. It is Takahuro Nakai, the Japanese attacking midfielder, signing here from Real Madrid for 6.6 .6 million pounds. Fingers crossed, Nakai can be the guy that is here with us when we're in the Champions League. We'll see. Looking to continue the growth of Lorenzo Valente, so we've sent him to Mallorca for the season. And Jason McCarthy is out of the club, signing with Vincent Company's under elect here. 2.55 million pounds in our back pocket for the deal. I loaned him out a few seasons ago, but now we've decided to permanently sell George Yu here. 190,000 pounds. Big dollars. And Nick Freeman also out of the club, the English midfielder off to the Turkish league for 900k. Have decided to send Walid Brassier back to his home nation of France for the season as we've loaned him out. So there we go lads, difficult window in terms of making significant progress. Really not sure in terms of what to do with the starting 11. Obviously, it was obvious we needed a new attacking midfielder after we'd sold uh, Tabuni Nakai in there. Hopefully, he turns into a beast. But we'll suss it out. We'll see what sort of a season we're ahead, we have ahead of us. But yeah, crack on, see what's going on. The good thing is the side is starting to grow nicely. A fair few of the players get into that 75 mark. Klaassen, Ruiz Atal, Ledesma, uh, Ida, uh, Onion Dinma. The left wing is getting pretty good as well. But we're going to suss it around. Are we going to be in a relegation battle? Are we going to be in a promotion battle? Are we going to be mid-table? I couldn't tell you, lads. This, this rebuild is just... Full of twists and turns. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a promotion battle. Oh, I could cry. I could cry, lads. We're fifth. Oh, the relief. The relief. If a promotion battle makes me want to cry tears of happiness, then this makes me want to cry tears of sadness. Adam Ida, what is with players in this rebuild and wanting out of the club? He was unhappy. So we've decided to sell him to Espanyol for 24 million pounds. That I know this is a deal that I'm going to regret in the future because he's going to grow so well. But we have signed his replacement and it is an upgrade as well. It is Brian Broby, the Dutch middle striker, I should say, joining us from RB Leipzig here, formerly of Ajax for 15.5 million pounds. Also decided to sign Brennan Johnson as a cover signing. Didn't have enough money to make any significant signings for the starting 11, but Brennan Johnson, 4.2 million pounds. See what we can do with him moving forward. But that's January done, lads. Ida out, Broby and Johnson into the club. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can finally reach the promised land. I'm just glad to see some progress though. The promotion hunt is still on lads. For the first time in this rebuild, we are gonna be playing in the championship playoffs, having to fight it out with Bristol, West Brom and Crystal Palace for that final spot in the Premier League. Aston Villa and Brentford already up there. At the other end of the spectrum, however, Luton Town, Ipswich Town, and Sunderland all relegated. It is so nice not to be down that end. Leicester City getting their hands on an FA Cup this season. Newcastle United, another Carabao Cup for the Magpies. Fair play. Oh, lads, we are in the championship playoff final. We have taken down West Brom, 3-2 on aggregate. And we are battling it out with Crystal Palace for a spot in the Premier League. The Eagles of Palace, the Ducks of Wickham. Let's go. No. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. We are finished as runners-up 
in the playoff final, losing 2-0 to Palace at Wembley. Bayern Munich have won themselves a Champions League, and Atalanta emerge as Europa League champs. So close! Yet so far here in season four, the grind to get to the Premier League is so real. We're going to feel so accomplished once we get there. And I am praying to the FIFA gods, please make this the season where we get promoted. Season five kicking off with a loan here as Ramon Jame Puehela. I feel very uh, exotic and very yeah, Mediterranean saying that, but we've sent the Spaniard off to the Turkish League. The Spaniard. The Spaniard. The Spaniard off to the Turkish League. Also loaning out Valid Brassier again. The Frenchman coming along quite nicely. Off to Nottingham Forest for the year. Also decided to send Brennan Johnson on a season-long loan to Club Bruges. A player departure here and a pretty significant one at that as Fred Onyedinma, the Nigerian winger, headed to FC Porto for 15.5 million pounds. And in return, we have signed Tyrese Dolan. He's a right winger, but I am planning on converting him to left wing, but the Englishman joining us here from Blackburn for 18.7 million pounds, a massive addition to the side. Also decided to sell the American defender Phillips to Tom Della for 660K. So there we go, lads, just the marquee signing of Tyrese Dolan. Still got a little bit of money to spend potentially in January if necessary, but Dolan into the side. Hope he can just bang in goals and assist for us all season long and hopefully get us up into the Premier League. This is the side that we have for this hopefully promotion campaign. The midfield and the attack coming along so nicely. Need probably Vokens, Bella Kotchep and a brand plate to pick up the slack a little bit, but for the most part, I am very happy with the development of this team. Walken, get in there, lads. Let's go. We are second in the championship right now. Oh, the, the sky's getting bluer. Everything's getting more. It's just getting better. We're second. We're second, lads. Come on. Please do not bottle promotion. Going to sign ourselves a free agent player, however. Franco Frascarelli, a Uruguayan left back, is joining us here on a free deal. Whilst we have signed Nicholas Detler here, an Argentinian midfielder, looks decent. We've signed him from Atalanta for 5.5 million pounds. But yeah, that is the January transfer window done here in season number five. We move on, Frascarella in, Detler in, and hopefully into the Premier League we go. Ladies and gentlemen, no, this is not an illusion. The Wickham Wanderers are promoted to the Premier League. It would have been nice to get the Premier League, the trophy for the championship, but we have been promoted nonetheless. And we take one step closer to rebuilding the Wickham Wanderers as we finish second in the championship. Blackpool, Rotherham, and Portsmouth relegated. Goodbye, lads. Liverpool take down West Ham on penalties to win the FA Cup. And Newcastle are unable to achieve a three-peat in the Carabao Cup as Leicester win that tournament. Norwich City will be joining ourselves and Bournemouth in the Premier League next season. And it is Barcelona getting their hands on yet another Champions League title. Roma emerge as Europa League champs as well. Here are our top scorers and assisters on the road to the Premier League this season. Some bloody great distribution in terms of goals there. Brody, Virginius, Nakai, Dolan, all doing pretty damn well. 10 assists as well for Ruiz, Atal, and Nakai. Things you'd love to see. But lads, I'm so happy after five grueling seasons, honestly, one of our toughest promotion campaigns in rebuild history. Five seasons it's taken us to get out of the championship, but here we are, promoted to the Premier League finally with Wickham. Like, at times, it felt like there was no light at the end of the tunnel, but perseverance pays off. We are going up. Say, we are going up. Life in the Premier League. How's it begin? Signing Mbappe, maybe? Signing Harlan, maybe? No. We're selling an Albanian defensive midfielder who has done nothing to contribute towards our promotion. It is Arnis Mekmede heading to Cordoba for £270,000. Another year, another loan for Walid Brassier as the Frenchman is off to Salzburg on loan for the season. Curtis Anderson also out on loan for the season again. Lorenzo Valente out for the season again. And Marcus Janssen 
out for the season for actually the first time. Our starting 11 is growing quite nicely, I must admit, but I am going to make an improvement here at the left back role. We are gonna bring in Manu Sanchez from Lille for 38.1 million pounds. Welcome to Wickham and welcome to the Premier League. Also gonna get some depth into the squad here. Lewis Maxwell joining us on a free. Patrick Saibora, this guy looks okay. 17 year old German midfielder joining us on a free as well. But this kid, this kid looks absolutely class. Rui Miguel Boamorte, 18 year old Portuguese right midfielder joining us on a free as well. That one is, I'm excited about this one. We are gonna send Nicholas Detler out on a season long loan, however, to Raul Betis. And Andre Burley is off to the Polish league for 220,000 pounds. So there it is, lads. Not the most insane start to life in the Premier League, but it is what it is. And we get Sanchez in. I'm interested to see what this season has in offer for us. Are we gonna be relegation battlers? I don't think we're gonna do a Leicester, but We'll have to wait and see. The squad is getting along pretty well. And I mean, it's still that same sort of mantra where everyone's growing together, which I'm happy about. Need everyone to keep growing together. Need to also work on morale, it seems. But we'll sort that out in the background and get us firing. Let's go suss out what sort of season we have in store on the 1st of January. What? Okay. Okay. Relegation battle, not on the cards, lads. Took us five seasons to get from the championship to the Premiership, and now that we're here, we're already in contention for European football somehow. We find ourselves sixth in the Premier League here, 37 points. We're bloody ahead of Man City and Chelsea on points. That is crazy. Did go absolutely crazy in terms of spending our budget in the opening window, however, so we've been unable to do any business here in the January transfer window. We'll just crack on and see, I can't believe I'm saying this, but see, if we qualify for European football here in our first season in the Prem and our sixth season overall. Yeah, it was too good to be true. I mean, to be fair, coming into this season, I would have happily, happily, happily taken 11th position, but given how strong a start we had to the season, it kind of hurts a little bit, but we finished 11th here in the Prem. Liverpool did go on to comfortably win the Premier League, however, whilst Bournemouth, Norwich, and Crystal Palace have all been relegated. Wolves have emerged as FA Cup champions, fair play, and it is Manchester City winning a Carabao Cup title. Atletico Madrid won a Madrid derby in the Champions League, whilst it is Napoli going down to Liverpool in the Europa League final. But there we go, lads. Honestly, pretty happy with our start to life in the Premier League, mid-table, 11th, again, I feel like a broken record, but I do not know what to expect heading into season seven. This has been a weird ass rebuild. It was our first signing when we took control of Wickham, but it is time to say goodbye to Jake Vokens as we've sold the Englishman to Osasuna for 9.1 mil. And we have decided to upgrade in the back line here. It is Leonidas Sturgiu, the Swiss defender. He's an absolute wonder kid in FIFA. We've overpaid slightly, I feel like, but we've brought him across from Spezia in the, in the Italian league for 42.4 mil. Gonna loan out Franco once again here, off to FC Nantes for the season. And the Portuguese wonder kid, Rui Miguel Boamorte, wanna get some growth into him, so I've sent him to Werder Bremen for the season. I feel like we were having crazier windows when we were in the championship, but we're at that point now with the squad where I can pick and choose and sign big name players to the squad because everybody's growing for the most part pretty nicely together. So that's really the stage I'm at right now. Sturgio in, Vokens out. Let's go suss out the starting 11. I mean, as you can see, the same trend following. The side is growing together. Klaassen slightly lagging behind. The bench also slightly weaker, but for the most part, especially the starting 11 and all the outfield players, I'm pretty stoked. And we do find ourselves in a very similar position to where we were last season, currently seventh in the Premier League on the cusp of European football, only four points behind third place Manchester City, which gives me a little bit of hope for the season. Are we gonna be playing Champions League or Europa League football next season? I certainly hope so. Again though, lads, no business in this January window. I was debating whether I sold Klaassen or even Jared Branthwaite, but I decided against it. Decided to give them at least the rest of this season. We'll suss out and see if we can get ourselves even higher up the table than we are right now. The second half of the season slump has happened again, lads. 
as we've dropped down slightly and have finished ninth in the Premier League this season. Better than last year, which is improvement. But I would have loved to be on the cusp of those European spots here. Ninth in the Prem, not to be. It is going to be Spurs getting their hands on the Premier League title, however. And Sheffield United, Brentford and Villa all relegated. Lads, we have done it. I think this is our first piece of silverware for the entire rebuild. But we have won the FA Cup here at Wickham. So, I believe that means... Europa League football's our way. We take down Leeds 2-0 in the FA Cup final. Leeds losing another final as they lose the Carabao Cup to Manchester United. Barcelona have taken down Inter Milan to win another Champions League. And it is an all-English Europa League final as City beat Chelsea. So Europa League football coming to Wickham in season number eight, lads. The grind continues. The marathon continues. Wickham Wanderers slowly but surely getting there. I was on the cusp of selling him last season, but we've decided now is the time to pull the trigger. Christopher Klaassen is headed to Torino, the Norwegian shot stopper signing there for 35 mil. Also decided to send Diego Bore out of the club. His growth has definitely stunted, being very poor compared to what I expected from him, but he's off to FC Lorient for the season. Same with Brennan Johnson. The growth hasn't been that great. Might honestly look to sell him in the future, but the Welshman is off to Almeria on loan. And I have decided to sell Armel Bella Koch up here. There's a guy that I'm trying to sign. And I don't know whether we're going to be able to do it or not. I mean, if we, if we do sign him, I'll tell you that it's him. But Bella Kodchap is gone out of the club for 15.9 mil. Marcus Janssen also off to the club, or out of the club, off to FC Sion for 1.55 mil. So the man I was trying to sign was a goalkeeper. It is not this man here, but this is still a very good signing in my opinion. Salvatore Pacini, 83 rated, 24 years of age. Hopefully could be like the regen of Gianluigi Buffon if we're lucky, but we've signed the Italian from St. Etienne for 35 mil. So there we go, lads. Pacini into the club. Klaassen, Bella Kodchap, and Janssen all out of the club. I'm holding on. I want to see what we're going to do in January. We've got a lot of money to do some stuff in January. Fingers bloody crossed. But some of the guys we've had here early on are turning into absolute beasts. Ledesma. 86, Ruiz Atil, 86, Virginius, 85, Brovi, 86. It is growth season, baby. The defense is probably the only area that needs massive improvement. I could honestly see us not having to touch the midfield and the strikers in terms of starting 11 for the remainder of the rebuild if they continue growing in this fashion. Also, this is confirmation that we are in the Europa League this season. Not going to show you every step like we do with the Champions League, but that's our group. We're in it. However we go is however we go. For me now, the main focus is that we qualify for the Champions League. We're currently sitting in fifth position. We are on 41 points. Liverpool, City, United and Leicester all ahead of us. But we need to just get on our grind here in the second half of the season. Need to get back into great form and continue climbing up that ladder. Lads, this hurts for me to do this. When I say in the video, don't get butthurt if, you're sell if I sell your favorite player, it is for these moments right now. Jared, I sound like I'm talking to myself, but Jared Branthwaite, I'm sorry, brother, we're selling you. Off to Atletico Madrid here for 30.2 mil. Also going to sell, we'll send Walid Brazier on another season long loan for the next six months off to Stard Redems. I feel like I'm losing the plot, lads. Did I just really say Stard Redems? A big, big, big signing here. I mean, this first name gets me emotional. If you know, you know. We have signed Rubinho, lads. We have signed Rubinho. Unfortunately, it's not the center forward slash winger, but it is Rubinho Olivier Oliveira Silva, the Brazilian defender, could be Thiago Silva's regen, has signed from Lazio for 53 mil. Also decided to sign a backup goalkeeper in between the sticks. Nico Mantle joining us from Atalanta for 32.3 mil. I've also decided to send Lewis Maxwell on a season long loan once again. But there we go lads, a pretty big January transfer window, really aiming towards a run at the Champions League. Hopefully uh, Rubinho can do that for us. Mantle a good backup option, but Rubinho into the starting 11 is going to be absolutely poetic. Get in there, lads! We have finished third with Wickham here in season number eight. And we are going to be playing Champions League football in season nine with the Ducks. 
I had quack, but I'm sure that would probably get clipped and put on Twitter and make me look like I'm on the beeline towards the loony bin. At the other end of the table, however, it is Watford, Crystal Palace, and Derby County getting relegated. And you know what I've just realized? Derby County have broken their own record for the worst ever Premier League season. Ah, oh, who said lightning doesn't strike twice? Unfortunately, though, we have lost the Community Shield at the start of the season, losing 2-0 to Spurs. But it's back-to-back -back in the FA Cup. Wickham Wanderers, FA Cup specialists. We destroy Everton, 3-0, my word. Leicester City getting their hands on yet another Carabao Cup. And Barcelona taking down Juve to win the Champions League. Lads, we have done it! Europa League champions! With the Wicked Wanderers. Oh, I'm debating doing a quack. Oh, fuck. I shouldn't have done that. That's instant regret. Fucking hell. Get that on a cringe compilation. But we've won the Europa League, so I couldn't care. One nil up against Monaco. Man like Brian fucking Broby. Let's go, boys. 49 goals for the striker. That is unreal. 49 goals. For Brian Broby, fuck my. It's Wickham's world and we're all living in it. Champions League bound, FA Cup champs back to back, bloody Europa League champions. Holy crap, lads. This has gone great. Remember last season when I said that there was a goalkeeper that I was really trying to sign towards and we couldn't just afford him? Well, this is the man that I was talking about, Ariel Gamboa. I believe is Kaylor Navas's regen, Costa Rican goalkeeper, 24 years of age, 89 overall. This dude's looking like a beast. We've signed him here from Tottenham for 104.7 million pounds. We've also decided to sell Brennan Johnson to Schalke, 4.5 million pounds for the Welshman. And I may as well do this, Salvatore Pacini, Headed back to Italy, signing with Roma, 60.4 million pounds. I was weighing up between doing that with Pacini or Mantle, and I thought we can definitely get more money here for Pacini, so we've done that. And we have decided to sign everybody's favorite Snapchat content creator. It is William Saliba here, so the Frenchman joining us from Leverkusen, 92 million pounds to bring the French defender across. Patrick Saibora also out of the club, but it is only a loan move for the German. We have stumbled upon a man that not only looks like an absolute beast in FIFA career mode, but also looks like one of the coolest names in world football. We have signed the French defensive midfielder, Brendan Moustache for the season. So there we go, lads. I'm pretty bloody happy with that. Gamboa, Saliba, and Moustache all into the club. Johnson, Pacini, both out of the club. The back line's going to be looking so much stronger. The goal has to surely be a run towards the Champions League. Let's go find out what the squad's looking like and what we can do. So yeah, this is the side. The big thing for me, I really want Robinho to grow a little bit. Otherwise, Sturgeo, I mean, it's between Sturgeo and Robinho. Which one's going to grow more in this season to fight it out for that starting centre-back role? But the rest of the side looking brilliantly. I would love if we could have a few players crack the 90s this season. Virginius getting up there. Gamboa, hopefully. Broby, Ledesma. It would be nice. But we are in the Champions League for the first time here in season number nine and this is what the starting line looks like or the starting group we have looks like Roma, Shakhtar Donetsk, Bozistas makes me a little bit worried about having to sell Pacini to Roma there but hopefully we get out of the group let's find out let's simulate in three two one let's go boys top of the group into the Champions League knockout rounds alongside Roma but now the big question is, who are we going to be facing? And the answer isn't necessarily one I wanted to hear. Thrown right into the deep end as we are matched up with Atletico Madrid in the round of 16. The good news, however, is that we are currently top of the Premier League here. Looking to get our hands on a maiden Premier League title in this era, in the Mr. Rebuild era. 51 points, 6 points ahead of Man United and Chelsea. So it's no means signed, sealed and delivered. But... It's definitely a good start. No business done in this January window, however. I was hoping we could maybe bring in a player or two for the bench, but unfortunately just couldn't get anything done. So we'll crack on 
We'll face Atletico Madrid and see if we have enough foul firepower to go deep, if not all the way in the Champions League. Fingers crossed. So here we go, fellas. The first leg is away as we head to the Wonder Metropolitano Stadium and face Atletico Madrid, who have a beast team in career mode by this point. But we are going to quick simulate the first leg of the round of 16. And the scoreline is... A two-all draw. We get two away goals on the board, which is bloody brilliant. Looks like we dominated in the stats as well, which is real nice. But it's not comfortable. A clean sheet in the second leg gets us through to the next round. But it's still two-all. All right, lads. Time for the second leg here. Like I said, a clean sheet is what we're searching for the most. But we need to get ourselves through to this quarterfinals. We've got the away goal advantage. Defense needs to be strong. Let's see what we can do. The second leg, quick simulated here at home. And we are through to the Champions League round of 16. Let's go. The Virgin getting the goal in the 16th minute. A red card there for Pozzo. We go through 3-2 on aggregate. We're not going to get a let up, are we, lads? I mean, you look at the quarterfinals. The only relatively easy side remaining is Villarreal, but still, they're going to be a challenge. So, we've been drawn up against PSG. Backs against the wall. Need to get it done against Mbappe and Co. I'm sure Neymar's retired by now, but Mbappe is going to be terrorizing us. On the road here, traveling to Paris, traveling to the Parc de Princia, needing away goals on the board again. It helped us in the first leg of the first of the round of 16, getting those two away goals. Can we do that again? We quick sim this first leg here. And that is exactly what we do. Two away goals on the board again. Virginius stepping up like an absolute magician. Oh my god, okay, two away goals on the board, I mean, same sort of, like, same spiel as last time. We keep a clean sheet in the second leg, we go to the semis. Here we go, lads, same spiel as I delivered about 30 seconds ago for the Champions League. Quarterfinals here, the second leg at home against PSG. We have a two-all scoreline advantage with the away goals. We quick sim it here against Paris Saint-Germain, and we are through to the semifinals. Let's go. They got an early goal on the board there, Badgie in the first minute. But Virginius and Brazier getting the job done. 4-3 on aggregate. Come on, the bloody ducks. An all-English affair in the Champions League semifinals. Looking to face either Real Madrid or Bayern Munich in the Champions League final. But it is the Red Devils versus the Blue Ducks. It is Manchester United versus Wickham here. Champions League semifinals. Let's have at ya. You guys know that I absolutely love having the away goals or the away legs first. We've had it twice in this rebuild so far. Got it for a third time here as we travel away to Old Trafford. Away goals on the board are exactly what we want. Are we going to get a third successive to all? Let's simulate it. And the scoreline is a 3-1 lead. Okay. That is significantly more comfortable than two all. 3-1, three, three away goals on the board. We are in a golden position here, lads, to qualify for a Champions League final. Let's get it done. <sighs> come on, lads. Come on, come on, come on. 3-1 up. It's going to take a minor miracle for us to not make this Champions League final, but we do not want to jinx ourselves. We're going to simulate it. The second leg... It's a 2-1 loss, but lads, we are through the Champions League final. The stress that I just felt then is ridiculous. Martial and Kudas getting goals for them, but Richie Ledesma, the club captain, getting those goals and getting us through to the Champions League final where we'll be versing either Real Madrid or Bayern Munich. And there it is, lads. Real Madrid versus Wickham, the Champions League final here in season number nine. It is bound to be a classic. It is bound to be a challenge. But hopefully at the end, it is the Blue Ducks holding that European Cup. Taking a look around the other tournaments, however, Chelsea have taken down Nice on penalties to win the Europa League. We are Premier League champions at Wickham. So that means Champions League football again in the 10th season if we can't take down Real Madrid here. But we are Premier League champions with Wickham. Let's go. At the other end of the spectrum, Brentford, Sheffield United, and Burnley all relegated. We've also got our hands on the Community Shield this season as we once again beat Man United, this time to win the Community Shield on penalties. No FA Cup to add to the trophy cabinet once again though, lads. Leeds United finally win their FA Cup. But it is finally a Carabao Cup. Let's go, lads. So we've done the domestic treble. And I think we have the Super Cup coming up as well because we won the Europa League. So... 
This is great. Yeah, I was right. The Super Cup happened earlier in the season, but unfortunately we lost one deal to Barcelona. But lads, here is a look at our squad report ahead of the Champions League final against Real Madrid. It has been such a grind so far. Nine seasons is definitely a lot longer than I expected when writing out this rebuild and planning it out initially. I thought it would be like a six, seven season rebuild at the most, but nine seasons, still not home. We need to get it done. A job needs to be done here over Real Madrid. We've got a big, big starting 11 on the park. The bench looking decent, but we're going to need the lads, the usual suspects, the Virginiuses, the Brian Brobies, the Ledesmas, the Nakais, all to step up and get a job done for us, lads. We're not going to waste any more time. We're going to put this side to good use as we have the Champions League final. Real Madrid, we can Wanderers. Let's go. It's our time, our moment. Come on, the Ducks. Let's get a bloody Champions League win here with Wickham. Defend early on here, lads. Just don't give him a shooting angle. Good stuff, Sanchez. Get it out, get it out. Fuck, I thought they were going to get a deflection in there. I can see that run being made on the right-hand side. We go out there. I want a little bit further in front of him, but we're going to go down there to Ledesma. Ledesma has the hard head start. Back post, back post. Get it in. Broby, yes! What a counterattack! Holy shit! What a counterattack! What a start! Defend. The last thing we need, lads, is to cop anything before half time. Vinicius, why did I lunge in like that? Why do I do that to myself? Get rid of it! Get rid of it! Good tackle! Oh, the lads connecting. Yes, over the top. Corner for Real Madrid here. Fabian getting that one in. We're gonna head it away. It's gonna come out there to Barco. Deflections, clear it! Vinicius, what the fuck just happened there? Oh, why did I take that touch with Saliba? I should have just smashed the square button and cleared it. And Real Madrid have one of the, the scrappiest equalizers you're going to see in a long time. Real Madrid has been all over us since they got that goal, to be honest. Boma, clear that one away. Yes, easily caught. Easily caught Gamboa. Counter-attack, yes. Yeah, slide, good. Good slide. Nakai. This is not what I wanted to do at all, but it somehow worked out. Get it over. Nakai. Nakai. Looking for somebody against his former side. Squaring that one in. Ruiz Atal blocked. Follow up. Ledesma. Ledesma. Let's fucking go. Let's go. 2 1, baby. You love to see it. It is Real Madrid here. We're defending. Oh, why do I do this to myself, man? That's a great ball, to be fair. Benton Kerr. Why do I do that to myself? I'm in. I'm a mediocre FIFA player at best, but I let myself down so much defending, man. I lunge in way too often when I shouldn't be, and that has given Real Madrid a golden opportunity, and they've taken it with two hands. I'm telling you, if you hit me on the counter-attack in the fucking 90th minute, I might just cry. If we lose it in this last play, get back. Everybody get back. Kramer up against Ledesma. Ledesma, they go there to Fabian. Just defend. 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 Come on. I don't want Ledesma to overcommit. Yes, good tackle, Sessignon. Just whip it down the line. We're away. No! Oh, we were away as well. Oh, we're headed to extra time. We could have hit them on the counter there if there was like 10 seconds more. Get that. Nice, Sanchez. Nice. Looking for something here. Ledesma. I'll get the one-two. Yes, nice. Nice one-two. Ledesma. Early opportunity here in the sand. No! What is that finish, Jared? I tried to drive it too low. Fuck. Defend. They're, they're passing it so well here, Real Madrid. Valverde. Headed away from Virgin. 
Here we go, come on, Ledesma. Well, one. I don't know how he ended up with the ball there. Go on. Sessignon sliding it through to Broby. Broby one on one. Broby. Broby. Let's go! Come on, Broby! Brian Broby, look at the scenes here. Look at the scenes. The 105th minute. Brian Broby giving us the lead. Let's go, lads. How good was that, though, to hold on to the ball from Ledesma? Holy shit. Defend. David. David, yes, good touch, Dirge. You. Fuck, Jared. I should just. I gotta learn to clear it, man. Fabian going there. Good block. Great block, Saliba. Come on. Can we get a counter attack? Oh, yes. We got the head start. Tyree stolen. Through there to Broby. Broby, finish it. Broby. That could have been the game. We could have iced it. Let's get some midfield support back. Might make a sub soon as well. Mason Mount on the attack here. David, that's a poor touch. We, oh, how have we not got the 50-50 there? It was a shocking touch. We should have made the challenge. Just keep defending. Keep defending. Mason Mount going. What? Where the hell was it? What? How the hell has David had that such an easy of a look? What the fuck was that? What? Come on, I'm so determined to get this bloody winner. The scenes, if we can score a winner the 120th minute, it's Sanchez. Oh, fuck, oh, we got lucky with the block. Come on, come on, one minute, wake up, lads. Ruiz. Nakai. Through. Dolan, 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 no, he, what? What? He missed that. How the fuck has he missed that? How the fuck has Dolan missed that? What? Nah. Bro, I don't know how we're in this position. I don't know how we're going to pens. The first one. It's a nice penalty from David. How the hell did Dolan miss that though? Fuck me. Broby. Top bins. That's all we want. Top bins and green times. I don't know why it didn't even give us the yellow there. But it's top bins and Courtois stays to the spot. Kramer. Oh, we could have got the legs. We could have got the legs. Same thing again. Ruiz Atal. We want top bins, baby. We want top bins. Come on, let's time it. We're going to green time it in Courtois saved. What? <sighs> Save this going, Boa. Oh, they've hit the post. They've hit the post. Come on, score here. We need to score here. We need to score here. We score, we equalize. Club captain. Ledesma. Mm, Fabian. Fabian. Saved. Let's go. Come on. Oh, you massive virgin. Please. We need to score this, Virginius. We need to. We're going to green it. Courtois almost saved it again. Vinicius versus Gamboa. Saved. Let's go. Come on. If we score this with Nakai against his former side, we win the Champions League final. I'm going to change it up here. Go bottom left-hand corner. Nakai. Yellow. Champions League winners. Let's go. Oh my god, what a final! Holy shit! What a rebuild, lads! If you enjoyed today's rebuild, please leave a like on the video. I cannot believe what I am witnessing. Holy shit! What the fuck was that rebuild? That's gotta go on the Hall of Fame. Lads, if you enjoyed this rebuild, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're down below. Subscribe if you're new around here. Oh my god, I'm out. Peace. What the fuck?